Hello, I'm Svetlin Nako from Softuni. In this video from my Dev Concept series, I will introduce the concept of software architectures in modern software engineering and I will explain the most popular modern software architectures like the monolith architecture, where the entire application is a single component, the client server architecture, where the servers hold data and clients connect to the servers to retrieve the data, and how modern apps are split into front-end, which implements the user interface, and back-end, which implements the server-side logic and data storage. I will also talk about the three tire architectures with their presentation, business, and data tires, the multi-tire architectures, where a complex apps is split into many tires, and the microservice architecture, where the app is split into several self-contained microservices, each with its own database. Are you ready? Let's dive into the world of software architectures. Software systems are structured as sets of interconnected components. The structure is called software architecture. Let's review the main principles behind the software architectures, from the monolith types to, to the client-server model and the three-tier and multi-tier architectures. Let's also explain two popular concepts from software development, the front-end and the back-end. Software systems consist of interconnected components which are organized in certain structure called architecture. Software architecture is a broad engineering discipline. In large organizations, the architecture is designed by the software architects. In small organizations, the architecture is designed by senior developers, senior developers, or by the team leader. The software architecture defines the structure of the system, its components and interactions. These are some concepts related to software architectures. Monolith apps, which are applications um, consisting of a single component. Client server model, uh, where the client requests resources from the server and displays them to the user, and the concepts of front-end and back-end, where the front-end is the user interface of the system and the back-end is the data storage and processing logic. The classical three-tier and multi-tier architectural models, where the system is split into user interface, business logic and data storage, and the concept of SOA service-oriented service architecture and microservices self-contains software components. Uh, all these concepts are complicated and developers learn them in detail as they gain experience for many years. At SoftUni, we shall review only some of these concepts because junior developers should be familiar with them and others will be learned over the time when you become a senior developer. Monolith apps are the simplest software architecture. Monolith app architecture means that a single application holds all its data, logic, and user interface, the UI. Monolith apps are typically designed for a single user. They don't expose shared data, which can be accessed by many users. They just use a data for its only user. Some monolith apps may be used by several users, but not in the same time. Users interchange. Monolith apps are disconnected from internet, which means that they operate on the local machine without storing any data outside of the app. As an exception, they can sometimes read some data from internet, but generally, basically, they don't store anything outside of the app. The application data in the monolith app architecture is stored on the local machine, which means that there is no any server connected on the internet. Examples of apps that are developed under the monolith app architecture are, for example, a smartphone simple game. 
You install the game, you play it on your mobile phone or laptop without accessing the internet. You play alone without any interaction with other players over the network. This is a standalone app, a monolith app. Another example is the Notepad text editor on your computer, which is an app where you can open local text files, edit them and save them. And there is no interaction with other users, no shared data, no communication over the network. Yes, you can save the, your, your data in uh, a cloud storage, but basically there is no interaction. The notepad works itself and it's designed for a single user on a single machine. The client server architectural model is widely used in modern apps. Websites, games, information systems, business software and many others are just few examples of client server systems. Unless the architecture is more complex, if the app is connected to the internet and stores data at some server, it is built on the client server architecture. Like this. In the client server architectural modern, the the server holds the, the, date, the app data and the business logic and it provides API to the clients to access the server data. Like this. We have clients, we have server, and through the API, which is exposed by the server, clients connect to the server and get some data. The clients implement the user interface, the so-called UI of the system. Uh, and they consume the server API. So here is the UI and it consumes the server API and connect to the backend, to the server. This is how most modern apps like uh, Facebook, like uh, YouTube work. The server holds the data and uh, such as users, chat messages, photos, videos, etc. And the client, such as mobile app or web app or other app, displays the data stored at the server. And the server is responsible for data storage and data processing. It holds the business logic, for example, who can access the data, which data, who can store new data, uh, at which time, at which business rules, etc. And the server exposes an API, application programming interface, typically accessible over HTTP and clients call this API. The client is responsible for the user interface to read the data from the server and to display it to the user. Uh, clients access uh, the server through the internet through, or through a local network. So they connect to the server and the data in the client server model is shared. It stays here, but it's shared between all clients, which can be many, and between all users. This means that several users can work on the same data in the same times. Just like in Google Docs, several users can edit the same document in the same time. The server usually implements mechanism to resolve the eventual conflicts when several users change the data at the same time. Uh, okay, so let's view, uh, look at a few examples of client server systems. Uh, to, to explain this concept better. So the first example is when a web browser opens a website, this one. So we have a web browser and a web server which provides this website. The web browser is the client software. The web server holding the website is the server software. The data is stored at the server site and it is the website it in itself. So the web site data is stored at the server. Okay, the user interface is at the client site and it is rendered by the web page from the website. 
Okay, so the second example is something that you may have used already is when you connect an email client to an email server to retrieve the messages from the mail server or send an email. The email client, client is the client software. So this is the client software, client, and the mail server is the server software, email server. Well, what, for example, the Gmail server or the Yahoo mail servers. And the mail server holds the user's mailboxes. It is the server software, the backend. The app data is stored at the server site and it holds the mailboxes, the mail messages for each users, etc. And to logic how to retrieve, authenticate users, retrieve messages, send messages, etc. The user interface is provided by the client software, the, the mail client, for example, the mobile uh, app which you use to read your mail or a desktop app, uh, app like Outlook or uh, Firebird, for example, or a web-based app like the, like the Gmail client. Quant. And the third example uh, is when we chat uh, in internet. We have a chat client communication software with, which uses a chat server. For example, your uh, Facebook Messenger or Skype or Telegram, which connects to the Facebook messaging server or Skype server or Telegram server. And the chat client is the client software. Uh, it is typically a web or um, desktop or mobile app. It listens for new messages and displays the chat conversations for the current users. The chat server uh, holding the users and their chat conversations is the server software, the chat server. Uh, the app data stored at the server site are the users and their chat conversations, photos, videos, documents, files, etc. The user interface uh, is the client site. It is the chat app, which can be a mobile client or desktop client or, or web app. So this is the client server model. It is almost everywhere. We have seen it many times when we use uh, apps, uh, computers, uh, and everything connected to internet. We have, when we have connected applications, uh, we have the client server model. It's an important concept in software development and programmers and software engineers should understand it very well because they will use it every day. And that's why at SoftUni we teach the client server model in many courses in the professional modules related to front-end and back-end development. The three-tier architecture and its extension, the multi-tier architecture, are architectural models for development of complex software systems. The three-tier architecture consists of three components called tires. The presentation tire, which holds the user interface, the business tire, where the data is processed, and the data management tire, where the data is stored. The three-tire architecture is used for structuring big and complex enterprise-grade system, systems. It allows these three tires to run separately as separate components or in separate containers and servers, which simplifies the maintenance and improves the scalability. And in many systems, these three tires can run uh, in separate hardware and can be developed and maintained by different teams of developers, even in different countries. So let's review what's inside these three tires. The presentation tire holds the client apps. Client apps are responsible for the user interface, uh, the presentation tire, they are responsible for the user interface of the system. They display data to the end user and interact with the user. For example, the Facebook app is uh, the presentation tire of the Facebook system. The client app could be a web front-end app running in a web browser or a mobile app or a mobile app, client app uh, running uh, on your mobile phone. And it can also be a desktop app, but in all cases, it, it implements the user interface, the UI or the front end of the system. 
The quant apps interact with the server side, with the server side uh, through an API, through application programming interface, which could be a RESTful service over HTTP or uh, uh, RPC server or some other mm, way of implementation of communication. For example, in a chat app, the client is the app and the server uh, and the, the, the client is the chat app which interacts with the end user and displays the contacts and the chat conversation and the server is the source of um, messages uh, which holds all the conversations for all the users. The business logic tire uh, is implemented at the server side and it typically runs in an application server or web application server or behind the sim a simple web servers such as Apache or JBoss or um, Nginx and so some other uh, web server and it holds the business logic, the business functionality which is invoked by the client apps through the API. Uh, the business logic tire implements the so-called business rules. Business rules or the business logic are the core functionality of the application. It is something which decides uh, who can do what? For example, uh, users can log in, but administrators can create other users, for example. So it can handle users' authentication and tutorization, access control, and business rules. For example, in the chat app, the business logic tire will provide API for user login and authentication, retrieving the contacts, retrieving the conversations with messages between the users, sending a new message, receiving an instant message, etc. The business logic implements the core functionality of the chat system. And finally, the data management tire is responsible data management tire or the database tire which is its other name is responsible for data storage typically it's a database system such as mysql msql server or postgresql or it can be a cloud based data storage such as amazon s3 or azure table storage or google cloud or whatever Data management tire does not care about the business rules. It just stores and retrieves data, objects, table rows, files, documents, images, videos, and other assets. Structuring the app in these three separate la uh, layers, presentation, business, and data management, is something which has many benefits in large enterprise systems. For small systems, it's, it's not necessary, but for big enterprise systems, it simplifies the manageability because different development uh, or IT teams can implement different tires. For example, this can be done in uh, Sofia, this can be done in Germany, and this can be implemented in Asia and can be maintained by different team. It also has improved scalability because we might have many such components, business logic components, or we might have a cluster of database server. So the system can be upgraded to use multiple database instances in a cluster and without changing the other tires. And it, this architecture might have improved security because a breach at some of the tires does not affect directly the other tires. For example, a hacked web server uh, does not mean that a full access to the entire database will be given to the hacker. And another benefit is that we have improved maintenance because smaller and simpler components such as this one or this one separately or this one separately uh, have an easier maintenance. Uh, at the same time, decomposing the system into three separate tires increases the complexity and takes more time for developer, for developers. Why? Because here we should support API. Instead of invoking a method, 
we should call have an API. Here we also should have an API, for example, the JDBC protocol or RDBC protocol for connecting to the database or some REST protocol for connecting to a remote database. All of this uh, increases the system complexity. So some more complex system can be decomposed even into more than three tires. And these systems are called multi-tire architect architecture. They implement multi-tire architecture. For example, they may have a client tire. Uh, they may have authentication tire uh, here out. They may have also a business tire and data access tire and database tire. So we have the client, it faces uh, the uh, authentication tire, then the business tire, then the data access tire, then the, the database itself. So this is called multi-tire architecture. Just this, uh, all each of these uh, tires presentation or business or data management can be split further into more tires. And this is how multi-tire architecture can be created. Now that you are familiar with some of the most popular software architectures, let's see them in action. I'll give you an example of multi-tire enterprise architecture to see it in action and to see how these three-tire and multi-tire components communicate with each other. This is an example of multi-tire software architecture diagram. It explains how a relative, relatively complex multi-tire system works. This is the diagram and how the client app interacts with the server side, the structure of the server side components and their interaction with the database and external APIs. This is just an example from an old Java based system and the details here are not important. The important concepts are that the software architecture is uh, a way of structuring apps. So we have a business uh, client which connects to the presentation tire. This is the UI of the system. It consists of some kind of Java and JavaScript technologies such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript and some JSP, Java server faces, Ajax and, 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 other, and other Java server side components. Then uh, this tire, the presentation layer, uh, communicates with the, the backend, uh, the other side of the backend logic through this business client facet. Uh, it's a, a set of Java interfaces which provide the, the API, a kind of API, a programming interface to, to this uh, layer. And uh, later we, we may have some component which implements this business facet uh, with the um, mock-up Java classes and the real implementation, this one, which has a tire for security and authorization based on Spring Framework, for example, and it has a business layer. So these are the actions that the end user can involve. But first, he should, uh, these actions should be listed here and then the user should be authorized and authenticated in order to do them. And finally, we may have several databases uh, which uh, have a data access layer and data storage and some external components such as SMS notification and email notification services and payment gateways. So this is an example of uh, let's say an uh, enterprise, an uh, old-fashioned uh, architecture, modern architectures uh, could be more service uh, and microservice oriented, but this is how things work in, in many systems. More complex systems may have more tires and more complex structure. Front-end and back-end are important concepts in software development. Front-end and back-end uh, separate the modern app into client side or user interface and server side, the data processing components. So almost all connected software we use every day has a front end or client side and back end and they are connected in, with some protocols. The front end and back end come from the client server model and they are special form of, of this model. So the server is the backend 
and the quant is the front end. So most modern apps are not monolith and have quant side the front end and server side back end. So they have uh, a kind of UI part and a kind of back end or server side part. Uh, for for example, a, a chat app has an app which holds the the chat user interface and backend which holds the messages and users which communicate between each other. And the front end consists of the quant side app comp components on the so called presentation layer in the three tiered uh, architecture. So the front end. Uh, displays the presentation to the user, the user interface or the presentation is through something on the screen. This is what users see at their screens, for example, text, images, video, fields, uh, forms, lists, icons, buttons, sliders, toolbars, menus and other UI elements. Uh, the front end is where users interact with the app. So we have the app and we have the user and user interacts with the app at the front end. It clicks icons or presses buttons. Uh, it can be in the form of sliding uh, list up or down, selecting items from a list, entering text in te text fields, drawing at the screen, playing and recording audio and video. And all this is a user interaction. And it happens at the front end. The data collected in the front end is typically sent to the server side for processing. So if the front end takes some data, it is sent over the network to the back end. And the front end only executes, executes some simple presentation logic like data validation. So presentation logic is a logic which says which button to show on the screen, at these moments, what the user should see and what should be hidden from the user. This is called presentation logic. So it is decided here at the client side or in the web browser. Data storage and business rules are implemented at the back end. For example, a front end uh, is the Facebook client app on your smartphone. It displays the news feed from your friends and allows you to share links, messages and photos. And all the content is stored at the back end at the Facebook servers and comes through the network. To display the news feeds, the client app sends a request to the back end through an API and retrieves the data and visualizes back at the screen of your mobile phone or in the web app. The back end consists of server-side components and software systems. So the backend is where data and business logic APIs stay and it implements the data storage and processing logic. It typically, it typically is, structured, is structured as services, which expose a set of operations. So we have services, 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 and they have a common API, which is provided to the front end to take some data, to send some data and the front end to visualize this data. The back end exposes an API for the front end to access the server side data and logic and this API application programming interface uh, consists of the functions and methods and functionality and messages can, which can be exchanged, which are available for the quant apps. API is the connection between the front end and the back end, and it's uh, the it is the part of the back end which is invocable from the front end. The backend systems often use external storage systems such as databases, for example, uh, PostgreSQL uh, database or MySQL database. Uh, and the storage system, database or external API could be dif different databases, 
uh, like MySQL or document databases. Uh, MySQL is a traditional relational database, but it could be also a, a MongoDB, for example, a document database or Redis, which is a key value storage system or cloud database like Amazon DynamoDB, which is uh, DynamoDB, which is uh, similar to Azure Cosmos DB, uh, enterprise distributed database uh, for enterprise systems. So the backend could use also file storage or blob storage or uh, some other kind of storage system or external API to, to third party backend systems such as, for example, a bank uh, API or a ERP system. Uh, it can be, for example, Amazon S3, which is a file storage or Azure Blob system, which holds uh, long files and data such as photos, for example. Example of backend is the Facebook server side uh, backend uh, infrastructure, which consists of servers and uh, APIs and other systems. And it keeps the users in Facebook, their friends, the news feeds, the shared links between them, the messages they send to each other, photos, and all the content and processing logic which you can see uh, in Facebook. This content is delivered to the front-end apps through the network uh, using an API, the application programming interface. And when the client type uh, app requests the news feed in Facebook for a certain user, the backend retrieves the data from the database and sends it to the client over the network. This is how it works. So most systems use the HTTP protocol to connect to the front-end with the back-end. In this scenario, the server side, oh, sorry, the, the server side, uh, in this scenario, the server side uh, communicates with the front-end over this HTTP, uh, and the server side APIs are exposed as operations Available as standard HTTP methods such as get, post, uh, and uh, put, patch, delete, and many others. And this is known as RESTful, RESTful API, uh, which basically is a set of operations used to retrieve and modify data over HTTP. Alternative to the RESTful APIs are some technologies like GraphQL, the Graph Query Language from Facebook, which is a data retrieval query language, or for example, Falcor, which is a technology from Netflix, which implements remote data models based on JSON. Some systems uh, use different protocols than HTTP. So instead of HTTP, they may use, for example, the JRPC, KRPC, which is a binary level protocol from Google for invoking remote functionality. Uh, and it is designed for high performance. Or another alternative to the HTTP is the ReactiveX, the Reactive X technology, uh, which is a communication framework based on the publish subscribe model, which implements observable remote data streams, which means that if something changes on the backend, um, a push notification or event is automatically sent to the front end to uh, tell, tell the front end that something is changed. Still, HTTP and REST are the market leaders and the dominant technology for interaction between front-end and back-end. The microservice architecture is an approach to developing software systems as a suite of small services, each running in its own process and communicating with the others through lightweight mechanisms. These microservices are built around business capabilities. 
they have their own database and are independently deployable. Even they can be developed in different programming languages by different developers in different countries and can be deployed in different physical locations. So let's learn more about this microservice architecture. In the microservice architecture, the backend of the system is split into many autonomous components which are called microservices. So microservices are self-contained, independently deployable and autonomous software components that take full responsibility of certain business functionalities, such as, for example, keeping the user profiles or implementing the payments. Unlike the monolith and multi-tier architectures, in the microservice architecture, each microservice is self-contained. Self-contained means that the microservice has its own API uh, here, and it may have an own database, so its data is contained in, in it itself, or a storage system, and it uses a separate deployment, which means that this can be deployed, for example, in Europe, and the other microservice can be deployed somewhere else, for example, in the United States. And they can work together in a sing as a single system. This is uh, geographically, uh, this, the geographical distribution is not common because this slows down the system, but uh, basically in many, uh, in many scenarios, the separate deployments means just different Docker containers for each of these services. So we use, for example, Docker and Kubernetes cluster, and these are Docker containers which run separately and talk, they can talk to each other uh, or either through the gateway or more typically through this message broker. Uh, microservices are loosely coupled. Loosely coupled means that there is not often a direct interconnection between them. Sometimes in most architectural patterns, they talk only through this message broker. They communicate typically through messaging or HTTP calls, sometimes directly, but most often by interchanging some kind of messages, such as a new user is registered, please uh, learn about it, and similar. In big and complex software systems, microservices had separate code base. So each service has separate code base and can be developed by and operated by different teams using different development platforms and technologies. For example, the user profile service, uh, microservice, can be based on Java and PostgreSQL. And the payments microservice, for example, could be based on Python and uh, PostgreSQL and uh, Django, for example, and can be deployed on the Google Cloud. So this is how this works. Complex systems can be split into separate business um, functionalities um, implemented as microservices, and these microservices can work together to provide an API uh, gateway or a single API to the mobile client to, for example, to, to, do, to implement its functionality or a, Mac, a web client, uh, a web app, which also access this uh, API, uh, this gateway or it's a kind of facade uh, for this army of services, which each of them works separately and has its own database. In this example, uh, I'll show you a bookstore system which is designed in the spirit of the microservice architectures. The system has four backend modules, uh, which has its own database. So the first is account service, which manages the user accounts and profiles. 
The second is the book service, which has a RESTful API and uh, provides uh, book inventory, which holds the books and provides searching, editing of books, etc., 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 and it has its own database. So this is the database for the books, and this is this is sorry, and this is the database for users. So the users stay here, and the books stay here, and orders stay here, and shipping stays here. And because these components are relatively independent from each other, they can be deployed uh, in separate Docker containers, and they can have uh, separate code paste, etc., etc., etc. So the entire system provides a public web-based uh, API, which exposes this API, exposes all the functionality here as a single API. So the mobile app only talks through an API with this component, and this component internally talks with the microservices. So it's invisible for the mobile app that this thing here exists because the mobile app just talks with this one. But developers can uh, be split into different teams, even using different technologies. For example, to implement the inventory database in JavaScript and the order database in Python. And the web app similarly accesses these uh, microservices, but the web browser never knows that they exist because they are hidden between the, uh, this, this web app. So both the front-end app and the public API gateway call the microservices to access internal in the bookstore backend functionality. And this is uh, an example of simple microservice architecture. This works very well in most cases, but sometimes the, for example, to order a, a book, you need to know who is the current user, which is stored in, in different microservice. So this service may have to call the other service uh, in order to do its job. That, this is the drawback of this architecture because when you split the functionality into smaller components, they are not always independent from, from each others. The coupling is reduced, but it's never zero. So mm, another different problem is that sometimes some data should be duplicated. For example, uh, the user uh, Mariah ordered something and the Mariah address and username and data is here, but the shipping address stays here in the inventory DB. So if you want to display the user profile in the mobile app, you should first call this and get the data about Mariah, and then you should call this and get her shipping address, for example. So this simplify, uh, uh, makes more complex the, the application and it can run slowly. But these are the drawbacks of this microservice architecture, which is very, very modern in nowadays. Did you like this lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softunit.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video tutorials on coding, dev concepts, and software development. Get access to more free dev lessons and learning resources for developers. Get free help from mentors and meet other learners. And it's all free, so join now, softunit.org.